made it to Nevada. Uh, got here about three o'clock in the afternoon. Thought I was gonna have time to scout tonight uh, after setting up camp, the first camp. Uh, I still have uh, quite a few days before the season starts, but that's that's part of the plan. Um, I need to locate a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, etc. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't have to get down that far, but um, you know, it's early season bulls, so I'm hoping to find one that's all by himself, or maybe with a couple other bulls. No cows around, just doing their summer thing, and maybe for the first 10 days of the season, maybe a week of the season, that's that's gonna be the plan before he starts even thinking about cows. So it's hot, but there's rain coming. Um, I just left New Mexico in the high desert on the antelope hunt, and it thunderstormed every single day. Just got here, and thunderstorms are rolling in so to all you uh, state game and fish managers if you need rain if you're in a drought just give me a tag i'll come it'll rain everybody will be happy problem solved <laughs> so i'll uh, check back in when we're setting up camp well got a little a little muddy coming in <laughs> it wasn't too bad though it was definitely uh, a little sketchy when we started sliding uh, sideways this trailer pulls like a parachute but this will be my scouting camp for a little while I've got uh, everything I need for and I, this is the crazy thing I haven't seen a single other hunter in here saw one uh, One camp, and it was 20 miles back. There's hardly any cattle in here this year. Um, it's, it's as green or greener than it was last year, and I already spotted a couple bulls on the way in. So I'm going to get camp made, and probably got three hours of daylight left, so I'll be able to see something tonight. First night glassing. Just got here a little while ago, like an hour and a half ago. Just in time. Uh... Saw two bulls, two bulls, blah, two bulls driving in. Uh, three bulls here where I'm at right now, and two of them are like really good bulls. <laughs> yeah. I had to pinch myself continuously because of how good this tag is. I'm like, oh, he's just a 350 bull. But that's the truth. And there's a young 315 bull down here. It looks like he's three years old. He's got like 15 inch long thirds. Like he's going to be amazing if he hits six, seven years old. Uh, I can see two camps from here. And that's the only camps I've seen in here. And I bet you they're not scouting for elk. They're hunting deer. So um, I'll share with picture of that bull the video of that bull here so you can see it but we only got a couple minutes left I just wanted to let you know what we saw the first night so far so good it stopped raining <laughs> Most of them were already laying down. A couple have stood up, laid back down, pushed each other out of their beds. But I think mean, there's a couple 320 bulls. There's probably one that's 340 that I've seen. And I see tines uh, a, a big top end. Um, they're bone white right now. They're super white. They just just rubbed so their velvet off. So I don't know how long I'm going to be here until they all stand up. It might be tonight, which is like 12 hours. 12 hour day anyway, so I guess we've already been 
daylight for three hours. It's only nine hours in the sun. I'm trying to hide in the service berries the best I can. <laughs> They're 1,200 yards away, so they can't hear me. And there's a good wind ripping over this rim right here that I'm on. There's also a 180 inch deer down there. Of course, I don't have a deer tag. Never fails. Okay, last morning of scouting. Um, didn't turn up any elk, let alone our target pole. I uh, just made it back to the quad. I'm gonna ride back to camp, go through my gear, make sure everything's ready for tomorrow. Cattle just left a bunch of snot slobbers on the seat and the handlebars, so I have my uh, own natural uh, scent cover, I guess. This smell like a Hereford. Um, as of right now, I, th I think I'm gonna stay right here. I'm gonna go, I'm, I've been down low, kind of where he's at, trying to get good video, trying to get closer, which you know, is like a mile away. But I've got a knob about two miles away, two and a half, that can't see everything, but maybe I can pick him up, figure out what he's doing. I was hoping he was gonna do the same thing he did yesterday morning, but no show. Anyways, I'll be up there tonight, depending on what I see and what the wind does. I might be right back here tomorrow morning and just try to sneak into his bedroom if the wind works and see if I can catch them coming in right at first light because I think that's what they're all doing. It's so hot and there's no wind the last few days. Last night I didn't see a single elk either. I don't think they got out of their beds while it was daylight and I think they're back in their beds or at least back in the PJs feeding in the shade before the sun comes up. And by sun come up I mean even over the horizon. It's just everything shut down. The only thing standing when the sun crests over the mountain is antelope. So, wish me luck. I gotta wipe off the cow snot off my machine. <laughs> Had trouble this morning finding an elk, any elk. This is my little sunshade, by the way. Um, but I think he's still there. No one else is going in there. I haven't seen a single tire track on any two track even going like remotely close to where um, where he's at. So I don't think anybody else is in there glassing him. I just, I'm having, a, I've been having trouble glassing where I, he's living and he's not moving far from it in daylight. So yesterday morning I caught him, I mean literally to barely see him film you'll see in the, the video it's pretty sketchy light um, he was in the PJs and like stationary like just disappeared so I know he's in one little cluster 15 minutes before the Sun came over the horizon so and last night he didn't come out at all I don't but I'm not giving up tonight I'm gonna go to a spot where I can see other elk too just to kind of get us and, and I can also see the roads and traffic I can get us an idea how much competition I'm going to have, which I don't think is going to be much. I think everybody else is in another area. Or maybe they're waiting for the rut. I don't know. Maybe they're not self-employed. Maybe they like money, and that's why they're not here the entire season. I must not like money. Um, anyways, we're going to try something different tonight. And see what happens. the hunt um, I didn't see a single elk <laughs> saw a bunch of hunters um, haven't seen that bull in two days now I guess not yesterday morning but the morning before so I got an idea somewhere I haven't checked um, and go look and see but it's the hottest day it's been in a while and there's zero wind so it shade. He 
he's uh he's in a good spot he's all i think he's all alone um and i've got other button poles i can see too but the sun isn't over the horizon yet he's down in the flats i hope he stays there if he can eat beds down on those willows it might be a long day sitting on him waiting for him to get back up or shift move whatever but this is a good thing and where he's at there's a big glassy knob behind me that i was using too there's a guide and his clients on there right now they can't see it from where they're at because <laughs> as soon as i saw him up there Day five, I'm not sure if I did a video yesterday. Um, pretty upset after having the wind swirl on my target bull the night before last. And I tried to capture my emotions with the video recorder. Uh, and maybe I'll even throw it in here, but I didn't even get my face. Like I set the thing up and I was so pissed off that it, I think I had like from here down. <laughs> so, but anyways, um, I picked the wrong wrong pile of trees little pocket and instead of standing up at 50 yards he stood up at uh 200 so he worked towards me i knew he'd feed into the wind and, and or work into the wind and i knew he'd go to water as soon as he stood up and he did both and he was working in and everything was fine and i was still gonna get an opportunity but at about 100 yards the wind just stopped it was like 15 to 20 steady northwest just no gusts just steady and then just stopped and when it did it almost recoiled back and just swirled right to him so he didn't act like he was really spooked he, he started out like a mule deer bounced out i've never seen a thousand pound elk do that but anyways um keep looking keep trying to find him my boot creaking there's no wind there's no I should have just waited because it's silent but the wind what little wind there was was just kind of swirling around too so I think they heard a rock underneath my boot or my boot uh, it was so quiet that I can hear the laces like stretching across the material on the top of my, arch of my foot boot but there was also one rock 10 seconds before they got up and clobbered off. I'm gonna try to relocate them. Well, it's about halfway through the hunt, a little bit over actually. Um, been on the target bowl, my number one, day three, six, seven, eight, and then yesterday, which I think is 12. I think today's thir day 13. There's only 23 days, so a little over half. And last night, I didn't record a video after it happened because I was pissed, but I found them randomly in the same bed that uh, just, I just was around going around searching old beds that I'd seen in bed in, during scouting in, in the first week of the season. And I found them laying in. Uh, uh, the bed he was in in the third night when the wind switched and that's probably my best chance to until last night. He was with another little bull and I first noticed the little one that's got my attention and I went in there and sure enough uh, half hour before dark he's you know I see his antlers move in the brush and he stands up and I make a move uh, down off the little point and around to him You'll see in the GoPro footage, um, snuck around the willows. He'd already laid back down, but he was out in the open-ish, 
I could see his rack anyways. Whereas before, you couldn't see anything. And he laid there until 10 minutes before the end of the legal shooting light. And when he stood up, he just stood there. <laughs> um, I had a good, oh, I thought it was a good yardage. Uh, I drew, executed a good shot. I mean, it felt great. I was watching that arrow just go right into where I had that pin buried. And then, doom, it hit a willow branch or a stem, stalk, whatever. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea where that arrow is. Um, he bolted out of there, ran about 200 yards and stopped. And uh, just looked around. Could see his complete offside. And then when he turned and walked away, um, he kind of did a, a little S turn. I mean, I, was, I, I watched him for a mile. Um, he walked, he'd trot, he'd stop, he'd look around, he'd eat. Um, he's unscathed. I went back this morning to look for blood. There's no blood. Um, I looked for blood last night too, but it's darkish. So, anyways, uh, I saw my number two bull two mornings ago. Um, I don't know where either of them are at right now. <laughs> it's a crappy feeling. But I'm not giving up. They're still alive and I'm still here. Um, hiking back out, I found five bowls. One's already broke, a whole beam off, and he was one of the better bowls that was running with number one. So, but no number one. Hustling to get back uh, to the quad so I can race to another point just to listen for bugles. So I can figure out where. Um, where they're bedded on cellar spot because I'm sure they're already in the timber. Maybe I can have an afternoon play. Keep me from going insane when it's 105 degrees. Um, it's supposed to cool off here soon in the next couple of days, so... Brought in some cooler temperatures, a lot of smoke, and coated everything inside my tent with a quarter inch of dust. Top it off, all I've seen this morning is a cow and a calf and two raghorns. Um, not many days left. <laughs> it's not a good feeling to not have a play like four mornings in a row, five more, ten, I don't know. Well, things can change fast. <laughs> I just made that video griping about the smoke and the dust. And that cow and calf and two raghorns I saw, they were just randomly walking out like kind of, I mean, way out in the open pasture. I mean, I don't know where the heck they were going, but it drew something out. Um, the new big bull I found a couple nights ago, was on a point bedded apparently. Um, I think everything's bedded early, except for them. 
but he saw that doe or a cow going across there with them and wasn't having it. He rushed out there. I mean, they're two miles away, but I can tell it's him. All I need now is for them to bed where I can see them. We have a play, maybe. Nothing else we know where we're going to be tonight. day six left decided last night after seeing some new bulls with the kind of the resident cow herd that hasn't really had much of anything good with it last night there was a couple of good ones um so i think at this point my chances of finding any one of those big ones that i've been holding out for and working to find is the best chance is actually being close to the cows um this morning walking in here in the dark it was just going crazy like you it's it's amazing there's not just elk running everywhere like i don't know where they hide but um i had a nice probably 360 type bull this morning destroying a tree like 30 yards from me I, hopefully the camera picked it up um his cows were fi filing in front of me and at 30 yards and he was closer he was like i think yeah between 20 and 30 and um when he crossed that lane, he was moving to catch up with them and no opportunity. But I think I am ready to lower my standards a little bit. And, um, yeah, I saw that one, the one day, <laughs> sat with him for 10 and a half hours. But I never seen him before that. I haven't seen him since. And I spent all day yesterday looking for him. Never stopped. All day long. Um, and the original number one, I haven't seen him since I missed him. So, struggling here. Okay, update. I might have missed a day. Um, Yesterday morning I went in where all the cows have been, they're rutting right now, and it's going on pretty good. I got uh, like 25 yards from a 360 bull, and I didn't have a shot, even if I wanted to kill him. Um, <clears throat> his cows had me pinned down, I couldn't move, but on the way out of there, I was planning on staying with the routine, following that herd of cows. There's a couple of them now, they've kind of split up. But I uh, ran into the rancher and <clears throat> the outfitting group that's uh, Lisa one of his places to stay uh, found the bull that I was on the day before, that I, or two days before, that I'd looked for the entire day before with no luck. Um, but they lost him. Um, I looked the rest of the day yesterday for him in their general area and, you know, a mile and a half, two mile radius. And he's the one that's injured. And, you know, I was back and forth about whether he's injured or whether his legs were just asleep because he was laying there for 12 hours without getting up. He is injured. Um, the rancher said it's very similar to what he sees in, uh, like, a calf, a cattle, you know, beef calf. Uh, if it's too cold when they're calving, sometimes they'll actually lose a hoof. And he said that it actually looks like that. So he saw it too. Um, so... Looked in there again this morning, nothing. Um, the wind's wrong for just about everything I want to do. <laughs> I've got four and a half days. So, I don't know. We'll see, but I, I still don't know where we're at. Okay, in this edition of Nighttime Chronicles with Tony in the tent, after he's been gone from home for six weeks and not killed anything, we're going to talk about holding out for big animals. In New Mexico, I found a 90-inch antelope, held out, only chased him, got a ridiculous number of stalks at him, and he won. 
When I got to Nevada, it was all or nothing. Show me the big bulls. Found them. Several. And then these, yeah, I've had opportunities and things have happened. Some my fault, some I can't control. <clears throat> um, and it stings, you know. No one likes to suck at what you love. And sometimes you wonder, like, is this really worth it? Is it worth being gone from my wife for six weeks to suck and be through agony? <laughs> um, on purpose. And, I, I knew, and lately I've been like, all right, the first, like, solid, mature bull that comes by, I'm, I'm going to try to take him. And tonight, as I was watching a, a really great bull, I mean, great bull. And watching someone else, you know, stalk in and spook him when I was waiting for him to come into water <clears throat> and feed, which they do every night. Just been kind of waiting on him or holding off on him. As I was leaving, kind of thinking, all right, well, I got one day left. <laughs> Just ruined that evening. Watching somebody else blow it. Um, I heard a raspy growl. And lo and behold, my number one came into the field kind of cut me off from my truck um <clears throat> 600 yards he was out and i and i recognized that growl i've heard him several times in the dark and i didn't know it was him including this morning and i actually tracked him for like six miles to this place where he was tonight well i guess i should have stayed on that track because i kind of gave up on it after going that far um but he's back and Kind of made me reevaluate. Maybe, maybe I hold out for him or nothing. I've came this far. I've only got one day left. And uh, God, he looked good tonight. I called him into 140 yards, and he just stopped and kind of quartered into the wind, and it was getting swirly. I think he might have got a whiff and over the fence, and away he went. I don't have a clue if I'll ever see him again. That's where I'll be in the morning. Packing up sucks when you don't have a rack and a bunch of meat to go along with the experience. Still got tonight, today, as soon as, I'm just gonna do a little bit right now to make sure I'm not packing up everything in the dark. But, so I gotta get going tomorrow morning. Somewhere I have to be by noon tomorrow. So, got a half day. Just located my number two bull, and he's in a great spot. I'm pretty excited. Last night, this is a gift.
dead. He's dead. Oh God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, he died suspended. Oh. <laughs> Last day. Oh my God. This is the bull that I spent 10 and a half hours for him, away from, for at 30 yards. Oh my God. I can't believe I pulled it off. <laughs> Shot him right, quartering away, right in the heart. There's all kinds of blood here. He made it. Seven feet. Sorry, I probably zoomed way in there. <laughs> oh, just about crying. Sometimes these glory tags are not as easy as they appear. This guy is an old beast. He's not as big as the number one was. I couldn't be happier. This guy, the, wait till you see the mass on him. Oh my God. And this is the one that had the, the messed up foot and from the looks like it, looks of it, I'll get a better look later. It might have been that way from birth, or at least it's been that way a long time. All right, I'm gonna go get the backpack. Oh my God. I saw where my first arrow went, so I knew I didn't need a second. You can see the entrance right there. Maybe a little sneak peek. Yeah, he's done. He's skinny. That foot was messing him up. But he is so cool. So cool. Yes! <laughs> oh my God, last day. I don't think I've ever taken a hunt in the last day. If you've watched this this long and watched me and my goofy documentary style selfies, thank you. Next year I won't take 23 days. <laughs> Promise. Okay. Uh, Going in to uh, retrieve <laughs> my bull. My 2022 Nevada bull is dead on the last day. <laughs> Swear to God, I did not do that on purpose. Okay, promise this is the last time I'm gonna do this. Holding this silly camera like this, showing you my ugly face. I'm about ready to get the knife ready. Drug it out to the last day. My God. And look at this setting. I gotta make sure not show uh, any uh, peaks, but we got a creek with fresh water. <laughs> There's shade from the willows. Had a lot of rough breaks this, this hunt. Things that, um, my number one should've been dead on, number, on day three and day 12. Uh, the wind swirling and day eight. Wind swirling on three and eight, and then uh, hit a limb on 12. But it all worked out. Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to notch my tag. My, This is what happens when you get old, you have to have readers. These ones. These ones are no longer for this world. It's 3 dollars I'm never getting back. Need one of them though. Whoa, definitely the right one. All right. Last day of the season. This is, this is not working well.
67. We're gonna stretch her out a little bit. Take her on her. 